Hey guys, welcome back to Park Attack. Today we're going to be going into the next campaign level, which is going to be called Ice Shelf Islands. So the description reads, a small amount of land has become available in the frigid north and presents an opportunity for an amusement park. Interesting, it was a theme park. Hmm. Brave the challenging weather and help your guests forget the cold. So I'm assuming cold's going to have an effect on this campaign. So we have 550 guests, so it's less than Batavia K, which is fine. Happiness rating of 75%, optional 70% experience rating, okay, and then uh, by year 3, June. We'll not be doing that because, again, I'm just trying to decorate these things the best I can. So let's take a quick look at the park and see what we can do. I already had some ideas of making it Viking slash Norse themed. So a lot of wooden buildings and stone structures, maybe a dragon, something like that in Viking ships. I kind of want to do that. So we start with 20,000. That's a good amount of money. So this is where the depot is. Yeah, it's a very simple build. It's nothing really crazy on top. Okay, maybe we can do something about this. Um, this map is very mountainy. Okay, there's some interesting, well, interesting terrain. So I've noticed that these little patches here. I think these are ice caps, or icebergs, or frozen water. Or technically speaking, it's land, but I think they're trying to imitate frozen water. So that's cool to know. I'm not going to build buildings on that. That would not be realistic. But I think I want to do some type of Viking Norse architecture. So let's take a look at the ride selection. So we have Carousel, Ford Ars oh my god, 4D Cinema, I can read, and Ferris Wheel. Okay, those are okay. We got some more for thrill rides. That's good. Jumper, launch tower, swinging ship, twister, ripe out. Yeah, your typical stuff. I built th how many wipeouts now at this point? A lot. And we're on episode 11, so again, I'm probably going to build more of these. And coasters are bobsled and wild mouse. Ooh, a bobsled. I don't build these often, so I need to figure out how to use one and build one properly. Anything in here? Oh, monorail. That doesn't work for my Viking theme, unfortunately. That's like really generic, like that's modern. So I will stay away from using that. If I get maybe, I don't know. I can maybe use a coaster as a transport, technically speaking, I could do that. Okay, so let's see what we got for shops. Hot drinks, good. Hot dogs, soft drinks, info, vending machine, cash machine. That's good to have in the beginning of a scenario because I want guests to Pull from it as most as as often as possible. That's what I want. And then scenery, we have generic medieval steam works, western. I think we have a good selection of scenery. We have Candyland available. That's nice to know. But I'm not doing Candyland. I'm doing Viking and Norse. So. Okay, we got some good stuff, actually. I'm a little... No, this is good. I'm not a little concerned at all. I, I was thinking it, and then I'm like, nah. We got some good materials here. And that's good to know. Okay, so... Yeah, let's just get on to the time lapse and get building. Probably gonna start working in this area first. Maybe just kind of loop myself around. Um, let me see. Wait, what's the temperature? 28 degrees? Well, it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. So indoor buildings and indoor rides will help and then hot drinks will probably be the best thing to sell for your guests. So let's just jump into some building. Okay, let's start off with the first couple structures that need to be established to figure out what the baseline construction or sorry, theme to be determined. But I knew from the get go I wanted a Norse slash viking theme because of the snow and the map really doesn't tell you what type of theme you should go for it's very generic ice theme because with the blue colors and the white walls 
So the first thing is to build that food court near the depot, which is actually the farthest from the entrance, which was interesting. So I decided to recolor that to kind of match the buildings I'm going to put next to it to kind of make it blend in. So that's a little um, hack, is that you should paint anything outside the map you can if you want to match it with the rest of your theming, because you can paint anything. It doesn't stop you from borders or anything of that nature. So the first two shops was the hot dog stand and the um, hot coffee, or is it hot chocolate stand? I think it's called the hot chocolate stand, but it has coffee in it. No, it's called hot drinks. I'm so so stupid. It's hot drinks. So I felt those were appropriate to be the first restaurants, and this was just the, the test to figure out what I wanted to, it to look like or try to do some biking structures. So I went on a Google search and I found a whole bunch of different pictures from different games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, even Valheim is the other game that I pulled from. And then um, Age of Mythology I pulled from heavily because it has a Norse um, faction. So I did that too. It's all, all good stuff. So I knew that everything had to be high-pitched roofs and wooden structures and just the color brown and gray and just figure out the the gist of the buildings basically so you can just see here that I'm just using shapes tons of shapes walls figure out my color template I wouldn't necessarily say that this building is the better of the buildings that I've built but I'm testing on a new theme in general so actually that's not true I've done I've done Viking before a long time ago it just depends where things are so yeah that's basically the gist of my thought thought process and also also figuring out my paths basically also is in, in this run too because I gotta figure that out well again this whole map was hard because of how the islands were set I did not want to touch anything in the water so I was determined to make sure that everything fit correctly on the islands already set and then the an ambitious thing I wanted to do was do a rock border near the fences instead of regular borders and that, that that was a difference and that does take the time to implement and so that yeah that was a crazy idea to do so so it takes up a lot of CPU power because the map is very slow in that section because the, most of the upper area is covered in a rock border formation so it's kind of funny um, here comes the second building for the restaurant I think I changed it from a yeah I changed the hot dog stand to a what's it called a custom stand because it's easier to hide and then I'm just trying to figure out a different style building next to it even though I'm keeping the same characteristics that would be the high pitch roof and wooden trims and just trying out a different look but still match that Viking vibe I'm not sure what the technical terms for Viking architecture is but I've noticed it's a lot of timber, rock walls, wooden walls, high-pitched roofs, and decorational elements on the roof or on the side of the building, so like shields and other things of that nature. And then I jumped down to a lower building. This is an experiment to make more of a curvature roof, because apparently there are curvature roofs in like Viking lore and pictures that I found. And the hangar roof works really well for this. The hangar roof is actually very versatile to, if you just change the color to the desired material, so brown being wood, um, a yellowish color would be like hay or straw. So you could easily use this roof for a lot of features like this. So even though it is shiny because it is a metal, technically speaking, it reflects, it still portrays what I want to tell. And it, this looks good. I actually use this roof, I think, a lot in this map, particularly. Now, over here, I'm using chocolate bars to build a very quick little door to give some impression on this building. I was going to put in a, a staff building you saw earlier, but it didn't fit. I would have to build the walls higher, but this was just the first filler building. Not all the buildings have to work in in this design it doesn't necessarily have to all all be functional buildings but i like to make sure that all my buildings are functional because it's just kind of me 
So we're jumping ahead a lot. So this structure you see here is a cover of the carousel, and this cover took way too long, and it turned out quite ugly. I didn't like it. So I was trying to do some straw thatched roofing on top of this carousel that didn't work at all. So I actually delete all that and replace it with shrubs and the shrubs worked out way better. So you'll see that in the break because I was just, I don't know why I thought shapes would do it because I did it before in Archipelago Adventure, but for some reason I, I did it with shapes and it just looks ugly. I just don't like it. So you can see it in all its glory, how bad it is. But again, that happens. I make a, a, I don't know, a bad judgment call basically on my design philosophies and only until I finally finished the project I looked at it I'm like mm, yeah that didn't that didn't look good so time to start over you have to be brave enough to do that and so I was like I'm gonna delete it and then when I did the shrub part it was actually really easy to put down so I don't know why I didn't just do the shrubs so right here is another curvature building using uh, the curvature roofs using the hanger pieces this is I think is a bathroom with a vending machine just to give an extra food option for the guests as you kind of walk down this boulevard because it's a long boulevard that leads back to the restaurants and periodically there are buildings and rides for you to go to but I think it's a good place to have a restaurant because it gets guests to draw into the park versus being at the front that's always what I'm trying to figure out or learn from not having my restaurants being so close to the entrance because I did that with Batavia K I did that with a couple other parks, I can't remember the other ones. Um, I think Nova Lab did it too. But you want to try to grab your guests in, apparently that's a, a philosophy of theme park design in general. So, Cool little technique there was I used tires to add some wood, wooden decorations or trimming on the side of the building just to add some texture, to add some difference to it. I did enjoy having ways to find different decorational pieces to decorate these buildings or to make them their personalities kind of stand out and still have the same terms of they all match in the same village and stuff like that so it's actually really nice to do um, at this point in almost I think the last six maps I've put down a wipeout which is kind of crazy like this is the most used flat right right now same thing with the carousel so I just don't know what <laughs> I can't really theme them the, the name itself, Wipeout, is like very beachy, so again, I'm not going to harp about decorating it. I'm going to make a, a quick structure for holding it above the water, and then kind of that's it. Um, this spot that's been sitting since the beginning of the map, I knew in the future I wanted to build some type of Viking statue. And so I looked up some different pictures of what Vikings look like, and the poses they hold. So this guy's gonna hold a spear and kind of just stand there, not menacing, but more like as a guard. So because it's, it's a, oh, excuse me, a guard statue, kind of in a way. So that's what I kind of did here. And kind of just figure out my scaling of the statue. I do like at the end of, at the end how well, it kind of portrays the Viking. I only did one statue. I should have done maybe more in the other sections of the park. Didn't have the... I don't know what you call it. Motive to do it. Because I built some other crazy stuff. But I did find a new way to use the strawberry piece. So I made a beard. So now the strawberry piece can be a net and a beard. So this is bonus for that piece. That piece is just wonderful to use. So, yep, yeah, there's the wonderful little stat, um, Viking guy. Actually, I need to finish this cape. This cape took forever to do because it was all individual shapes because I wanted the ruffles of the fabric. And that actually worked out really well. And then cylinders on top to kind of connect it. And then I kind of connected it to his neck and his shoulders. And then, voila, there is a wonderful little cape. And I actually kind of flushed out the statue more because it was kind of feeling empty without that additional backing of that uh, cape. And here I wanted to actually, oh well I skip it, that's funny, I, I must have edited it that way, but I did a little spike using the text pieces, you'll see it if you load up the map 
from the workshop. But here you can see the uh, carousel cover got that change. And then I added a twister because I needed to fill in the space again. And then I built a quick building across the street as a, I think that's an ATM building, just because I needed to fill it in. But in this map particularly, I wanted to try to cover up more of the, the flat rides platform. So to kind of make them more curvature. And so using rocks is a kind of cool way to do it. Or you can use uh, curved borders works to kind of just cutting corners and make it more natural, more unique instead of the squareness of the grid. So we're trying to break up that grid again. As usual, because that's... I think that's the objective to make the game look more interesting. Even though the, the grid is nice to have because it, I know that things are lined up. Versus, let's say, Planet Coaster, where everything is so free that I don't know what's lined up, and that makes me anxious. And just like, I don't know if it actually is lined up. I know you can enable grid on Planet Coaster, but it's just not the same for already having a baked in grid like this in Park Attack or any other roller coaster game like Roller Coaster Tycoon. So it it's just how it is <laughs> at this moment. Here is a quick cover for the queue for the twister. Nothing too special. These are just simple covers just to kind of match the theme throughout each ride. I didn't want to cover the twister this time because I felt like it would be another structure like the carousel so I just opt on not covering it. Now we venture down toward the ice cap of the map so this is actually terrain but it's been painted to look like ice so I was like thinking well it's covered so it's frozen ice so why not make a little fishing village that was popped up and the Vikings made little tents, and so I found some cartoony concept art on ArtStation that had this type of striped tenting awnings with wooden structures holding it up, and I felt that that was appropriate to put on the ice, because these are these, these structures wouldn't be as heavy as a regular wooden building, so I opted into doing that. And so this building here is just a glorified covered seating area for the guests to kind of go hide in if it rains or snows, I don't know, something like that. It's kind of just being funny with it, but I felt like this was a cool way to kind of fill in this area and give it somewhat of a storytelling element of these are ice camps and they're fishing for, well, they're ice fishing, so they made little holes in the ice, fishing for the fish, and it's kind of a cool little opening area. So, and in the, in the floor is all made of wood and it suggested that there's pylons holding the platforms in place. I could have raised them a little bit, but I think that would be too high off the ground so I kind of kept them on the ground and then made the pillars to kind of identify that these are being held by these pillars and being held up and then I, I think I bordered them to kind of give them that extra length of no I don't think I bordered them I kind of left them like this because they look like they're just on top of the ice and then quickly made holes and then covered up with shapes to kind of make the holes a little bit more organic looking or kind of like they were chiseled out. I made a couple of those holes. I think I made four in total. And then added boxes and random junk to s suggest that there's life being ha happening right now. And then people are moving junk around, moving objects and boxes, fishing, and then added some snow actually on the back, on, on the roof of the, that one little house. So yeah, you can see that it's kind of just storytelling in, it, in its nature. And then it's nice to always just blueprint that same building, move it over, and then change the color of the tarp. And that's what I did. Now there is one restaurant here on the ice. This is going to be a bigger tent because I found out that they made... Well, the cartoon concept art I was following had a bigger tent. And so I pulled from that too and made that just one giant tent with little tents attached to it. They kind of give us some more interest and more structure. And it is a way to hide the depot and then kind of build, well, a pretzel stand, which made sense in the long run. I wish we had a fish taco stand. That would have been perfect for this. Or a turkey stand would have worked as well, but a taco stand would have been great. A fish taco stand. Maybe that'll be a DLC with one day. Who knows? I mean, that would be cool. Or someone mod it. That'd be great if someone could mod it. So, I'm just doing the simple structure stuff. So, I 
The cube size, I've never talked about this, but I think the cube size is 0.20 on grid 8, which is the closest you can get to making a perfectly lined timber structure with using shapes. Um, you can do that with 0.20 with regular cubes instead of the 45 degrees, and then do grid 8, you can make a line perfect too. It works as well. So that's the tip. Well, that's the technique I use for those pieces. Um, nothing else really to enlighten you know, about the shapes. I mean, I use a lot of shapes in my builds in general. You guys have seen it numerous times at this point. But this is just trying to figure out the end look of the structure. I'm, I'm still winging it at this point. Again, I have a a set idea in my head and concept art that I follow but everything is has a chance to change at the last second like for example the carousel easily changed the last second because I didn't feel like it was fitting well from my style and it just didn't was it executed correctly so I had to change it so finally coming to the first coaster this was a while in because I spent a good I want to say three hours building all that stuff before. And then I needed to build a coaster to kind of start making money because I was low on budget. Even though I was only had like three flat rides, everything seemed pretty well. And actually I was making money just on flat rides, which is actually the crazy part. So the coaster needed to happen. So at first I wanted to build a wooden bobsled coaster like Flying Turns. And it was going to be like that until I placed down my first rock and I was like, okay, I'm going to build a rock mountain bobsled ride because why not? And it's going to be some type of mine ride or something. So it changed. I was going to custom support this sucker like a wooden, a wooden bobsled. It was going to be actually insane, but I felt like it didn't match the environment. So I changed it from there. So... This is, I think, my not my first bobsled. I built bobsleds before, but this is like a legit bobsled that I think looks okay and looks pretty realistic to all the bobsleds I've looked up. So it looks good. Uh, I was gonna do the single cars for a little bit, and then I'm like, ah, eh, I want trains. So I changed that up too because apparently, trains can can have a higher capacity than the single cars. Because there's seven cars here and I had three trains running and I still have three trains running to this day actually so this is the like this coaster eats up pretty well on uh yeah I think I just kept three trains yeah I keep three trains because I can it can support it because that block section is just good enough for the trains to cycle through and guests load into these bobsleds quite quickly actually so that's kind of what I did And so on to probably figuring out my structure for the mountain. And going forward, I knew I needed to do the snow cap trick that I've done before. So you can learn that actually in my Park Duke University episode one called Mountains. I showed that trick off right, right off the bat, but it's overlaying two rocks and painting one of them white to simulate snow. A uh, quick note here, the colors on the curves of some of these tracks that are gray I'm indicating what goes under what goes into a tunnel just to help me kind of I don't know how, you, how do you say it plan out my my mountain range accordingly around those pieces of colored track pieces so it's kind of a technique that I just I don't know thought about when I was working on it so you should use that too it's a cool little it helps you out with basically yeah, it helps you with the layout of your mountain if you know where your tunnels would go. So I did that just to help me out, and then I built the first mountain here in front to kind of get a a feel and a style of the structure. And man, this was expensive. <laughs> it was expensive. I think I pulled out two loans for this mountain, which is insane. Absolutely insane. So there you can see the snow effect. I have two rocks basically inside each other. One's a little smaller and then heightened up and then colored white. And then there you go, you have the snow effect. And it looks pretty snazzy. 
And so I just went on a rock building tirade and just built this structure just to kind of give it that look. Yeah, it looks nice. I don't think I would change anything besides maybe adding cylinders to add some more maybe curvature to the mountain, but I wanted to make this mountain very edgy and sharp edges, so I didn't use any shapes in this construction. Just to kind of see if I can make a different mountain range. It's really hard to change up your mountain ranges in this game, trying to make them look different, because we only have a set number of rocks. We have nine rocks in total. Actually, no, we have 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 rocks now because there's three rocks that have gems on it from the adventure pack. So, uh, it depends. That's why I use shapes sometimes to try to make different mountain ranges of different environments with those rocks. So again, it's, it's a hit or miss, depending. So, I did keep some of the wooden structure idea to this map, to this coaster, because I wanted a wooden structure to kind of suggest it's a bridge for one of the sections of the coaster. I mean, this is like a glorified mine train, but bobsled version, so it's kind of weird and set. It worked. I don't. It was just something different from what I've done before, except for the mountains. I've done mountains before in a build of this nature, so. Yeah, so actually I don't finish the mountain here. I will show you a little bit off camera when I show you in the tour. I did most of it off camera because it was a lot of mountain work. I didn't it just a lot. So you'll see that in the, the tour right now and then I'll talk about upcoming features and additions to the park. So I'll let you go here and meet you over on the tour of the park. Okay, let's have a quick tour of the park at w what it's doing at the moment. And I'll describe some of the upcoming plans I have and my thoughts so far on the scenario. So, yeah, this scenario is harder than I thought to complete. It's it's a slower, I don't know what you want to say, slower process, slower progress in a way, because the money in this park is not as good. And so we're trying to figure out that out. And also building on this interesting terrain has been a challenge. But at this point, I feel I'm very content on how the village looks right now for the front area. And then as we kind of go down to the ice cap here, this I like that there's two distinct areas right now. So you have this fishing village and then you have the main village here. So this is the fishing spot with little holes and things like that. I'm glad I moved this over because that was this ride was not good right here. It just kind of took up too much space. So I kind of like that it's up the, up on the hill now and kind of just a good spot because if you think about it, you walk from here, you see this directional shot. You can then be excited to go on that ride because you see it from a distance. Um, also off camera, there was there was this fence here. This is from the park border. I don't like it. It kind of was odd to have chain link fence there so I found a way to kind of cover it up using walls and then made it look like a half tent or something that houses some type of materials all built on the ice so it felt very fitting and it worked out really well and in the time lapse I was working on the bobsled roller coaster so this is not done yet I had some money issues because I'm using so many rocks this is like I think the most rocks I've used in this in this playthrough so far and since I'm doing double rocks on top of themselves to give off that ice cap look it is going to take longer than it is expected and I still have some plans to add some type of mining facility up here maybe maybe some just more ice rocks and stuff like that kind of pull it together and then finish the station and then make the transfer track proper with a maintenance shed for it. That's kind of the plan there too. Freshen this area up here too to kind of make it match cohesively with this area. Kind of maybe do a, a transition to a different area because I want to make this like a like a Norse dwarf mine. That kind of is the idea here. I'm not really sure. Yeah I think that's kind of what I want to do. So I got some rock work still to do. I might do that off camera so that I don't 
have to show off so much of that footage, but I'll maybe do some recordings of the station, the transfer track, and then other things like that. But I also, let's see here, what else do I want to do? Let's go see how much, what rides. Also, while doing off-camera stuff, I was researching rides and stuff like that, getting some more thrill rides. I did see that I got an inverted dark ride, so that would be cool to do a dark ride again, maybe in this park, if the park and the money permits me. We'll see. I want to build a hyper coaster maybe over here like if the station sat here and the coaster kind of went this way and around and kind of looped itself back to the station that would be kind of cool. Maybe that's what I would do because right now the bobsled coaster does make good money it's just not exciting enough for the guests who are looking for a high intensity and I think I can pull a high intensity off of a hyper coaster I'm assuming and then go from there. Um, I also researched all the scenery items, except for actually we don't get uh, Spooky. So Spooky does not is not allowed in this scenario, apparently. So that's fine. I don't need my trusty burial ground this round, but I will make do. So, but so far the park's operating at pretty good capacity. I'm not making money right now. I'm losing three bucks. Oof. Okay. Well, I think I'll figure something out. Right now I'm working on a steel coaster. Okay, that's fine. Steel coaster is very simple. Right now, I like the the way it's going with the Norse theme because I wasn't really sure what type of theme I was going to pick for this park. But it seems to be working out more leaning on to the more fantasy stuff of like Norse mythology and or like other type of said video games. I don't know what you want to call it. Video games and movies and other ins inspiration. But yeah, so we'll continue on building. We're going to build the station for the bobsled, the transfer track, and then I can finish up all the ice cap work because that's going to take a good hour or more to complete because it's going to take some time. So all in all, let's just continue on working. I'll see you over in the next time lapse. Okay, let's work on the station for the bobsled because that needs to be well, constructed to kind of match the theming of a mine slash boundary of some sort. I'm not really sure this is based off anything. I think I just kind of winged it and it's kind of what I do in most of my builds at this point. I'm winging it. We're kind of having a, a similar baseline of theme going around. So I knew I wanted wood. I wanted brick, which I finally got researched and then kind of suggest it has the materials of a foundry. So uh, metal trims, wooden structures, uh, tin roof because it's going to have a fire somewhat and then I wanted to use the hangar curved roofs to add some interest to the building and give it some more uniqueness and it honestly kind of matches the rest of the other structures that I've already previously built. So that's kind of the, th the thought process so far and then just kind of adding my borders as trim to kind of cover up the unseemly edges that I don't like when roofs meet up with walls. I feel like it looks better with a trim of some sort and a structure. I also don't like walls without a corner pillar sometimes. If the like a, a concrete wall I won't do it but for a wooden wall I feel like it needs some outlining borders around it to give some definition for some reason. I just feel like that's the thing you should do. I don't know it's a weird feeling I have when I look at a wall that doesn't have any details on it. I also get weird when a wall is blank and I feel like it needs a story element or a detailing of some sort or a blemish. So that's why I try to add greeblies all over my buildings as usual. So yeah that's kind of the thought process of trying to build a structure and trying to also get away from the rectangleness of architecture the grid like I already discussed earlier about trying to make things off grid so this is kind of the same here and just adding some random stuff to it nothing's really yeah nothing's really planned out it's kind of just um, gut reaction feeling what looks good and what doesn't look good and if it doesn't look good to you we start because I did that with the the carousel cover was completely horrible and I didn't care for it, so 
it's always a it's always an option to kind of do things over again and also letting things sit and mull over in your head as you finish it and seeing the product as it is it's also a good thing it's kind of like an evolution type of thing you kind of just evolve in your structures and detailing and it's not always thought out so well it's not always thought out correctly or not correctly it's more like um I didn't draw anything up or anything, I just kind of winged it. So on to building the transfer track station, or oh, transfer track maintenance shed, which is the perfect opportunity to build a new uh, break room, because that needs to happen, because I only have one in the park right now, and we're already far away from the entrance, so a new one needed to be added. Uh, what else can I talk about? Technique speaking, well, it's just kind of just doing little grunt, little bits of grunt work in the park. Adding trees, grass, fences, poles, lights, trash cans, benches, all the things you need in a theme park to kind of keep it running. And then going back and forth on different buildings to see if I could add more details to them. Had a different style to it to make it its own personality, things like that. Um, the transfer track maintenance shed is very generic, kind of is hidden in plain sight type of deal. I don't need to go too crazy. Because I want the main building of the bobsled to be the, the eye catcher and the buildings around it should kind of support that idea. So that's kind of the objective here as well. You can kind of go from there. So I think the next thing we get to work on is a hyper coaster because I also discussed that I wanted to work on that because I haven't built one yet in the campaign at all and I felt like this map was a good candidate for it. So on to making a hyper coaster was needed and we get to do that actually so I think that's going to come up in the next second or so after I do some more gold messing around making it out of gumdrop pieces. So here's the hypercoaster. I kind of made a little spot out of terrain to kind of suggest where it should sit the station and then that actually later changed to another location. It's always good to pre-plan, I'm noticing. In the last couple maps, especially Batavia K, I did that pre-planning with shapes. I didn't do it this round, but I kind of used the terrain paint as my planning out because I did put an enterprise and a clockworks there to add some more right interest and some more guest generation needed to happen. Because after adding this coaster, I think I get over the 550 guest count and that kind of basically wins the map. So I knew in my head strategically what I needed to put down to get that number up. but. It's kind of a guessing game still. I don't know the full mechanics of how campaign works necessarily, but it's a good educated guess. So this hyper coaster in particular is not really modeled after any of them. I did look at a couple of them in real life to kind of see which what they kind of their traits are. I've noticed that they're very long L-shaped layouts. And this map really didn't permit me to do that, so I kind of just made a very twisty hyper coaster layout. It worked. It's not as realistic, but it gets the job done. But I can run two trains on this layout. I did a a um, decline brake brake run, which I think was more realistic for a B and M. So I did that, and then I had enough room to build a transfer track and a maintenance shed for this coaster as well. So that's always fun to do is the realism stuff. Add some, well, realism. So when it came to the station, the station need to be a, a significantly different style of building that the Norse would have or the Vikings would have. And I opted on making it a temple of some sort. I didn't do the full research on this. I don't know what it is, particularly but I know it's a temple of some sort or maybe it's a log house or maybe it's the main structure of a village I'm not really sure but I like the tierness of the roofs so I felt like I needed to try that out because I've never, never done it before I don't think 
I'm trying to remember, have I done it in an old project? I don't think I have. So I tried it this round, and to be honest, it's not the most detailed building that I've built. I kind of didn't know what to do with some of the big boldness of the roofs because there's so much surface area to cover that I wish there was a I wish I added some type of detailing or roughening up on the structure um, if I tiled it maybe it would have made it better I don't particularly know yet because I didn't do that and I didn't want to spend the next I don't know four or six hours custom tiling it because I didn't do custom tile roofs for the rest of the buildings in the map either so I kind of kept away from that. I try to make my roofs match each other for a certain style to kind of make the map kind of pull together, so I didn't do that here. But I give this building a good 75 rating, maybe an 80 rating. I like it. It works for the theme of the map. But in the back of my head, I feel like there's something missing. As you can see, it kind of built itself here. Maybe you might spot it, you might not, it might be just me. But I like the tierness of it, and I also wanted to try out some overhanging roofs by making the next tiers out of shapes, not walls. So that adds some more flexibility to the building. Um, most of the pillars down here are made of, I think, the medieval pillars, and then I did like shapes to do wooden structures across to kind of support the structure. And, oh, I, I named the coaster Nidhogg, which is a Norse dragon of some sort. So I felt that was fitting. Um, I pulled a lot from Mage Mythology, actually, in this build particularly, because I had to go look at some of the buildings that you can build in that game. I actually played Age of Mythology a couple times just to see some of the structures up close, took some pictures, and then kind of built the structure after that. So you can see me, I'm just kind of fiddling around with different trim decorations that kind of give it that Viking feel. I do like that overhang at the back near the transfer track. I like that. It's my favorite. Um, painting the roofs actually helped a little bit with my weird roof phobia, which is that helped a little bit, but I still feel like it's something missing. Um, I added a fake bullpen just to add some realism and the guests just kind of go through it. They don't go through the rest of it, but it's like just imagine they would have to add an additional cue. They will because the, the ride got popular, who knows. So I made a fake pull pit underneath the chain lift, which was fitting. And the structure is kind of growing on me at this point when I'm working on it. I'm kind of just letting it kind of establish itself basically and build into its um, existence. So here's the shape thing I was talking about with the walls. I kind of made shapes go inward by one I think it's 8 grid or 10 grid. I can't remember which one grid I used. I think it's 8 grid. Kind of pushed it in more so that the roof here is overhanging and then kind of go from there. And then pillar details on the corners that add some additional interest. Not interest, just fixing rough edges. I'm always using pillars and things like that to fix the blemishes and stuff like that so now we skip on to something that's very ambitious of mine and this is a last second decision because I was going to leave the map as it is but I'm glad I didn't do it leave it like this so I got the basalt pillars and I felt like I was going to make some type of rock structure like Terran now if I had freedom to K installed or well rip freedom to K no longer exists but if we got another mod that allows us to rotate I would probably use those basalt pillars to do it more accurately like Terran but I want to see if I can do my own version in Parkitect in vanilla and it worked out really well I made shapes as my tier kind of my outline and then I covered those edges with basalt pillars to be honest this took about I want to say an hour and a half to do it manually and I built two structures actually of these rocks there's one actually near the coasters more apex of the ride and so this pile of rocks actually is going to support a creature. So this is the first creature out of the campaign so far. And I decided it would be fitting to build some type of dragon, a Nidhogg of some sort. Now there's different variations of the Nidhogg. Mines is kind of more medieval looking. 
and there's nid hogs that have no wings or nid hogs that have wings. Uh, it's all depending on your taste. Kind of weird. So I kind of did my own version. And I want to see if Vanilla can do this. And I'm quite surprised that you can do this in Vanilla. For how many hours I have in this game, I'm still surprised on the flexibility of this game. And there are some rough edges on this creature, I can tell you that. Like, Construction Anarchy could fill in the gaps better than it would. But that's just a little gripe I would say about it. But overall, with having those diagonal pieces now from Booms and Blooms really helps in portraying this, this creature's stance and pose. And it was a perfect opportunity to do an effect where it breeds fire down on the um, coaster. And man, I had a good fun time doing this. This is about... I'm going to say an hour of building this dragon. It took that long to kind of figure out his positions and his leg interactions with the mountain and then kind of just give it structure. Um, the only thing that was hard to do actually was the mouth, the bottom jaw with the teeth. The height measurements for placing the cone are kind of wonky. So that was kind of hard to put in, but I kind of did the best I could. And then, well, with the dragon, I've been building dragons for now a long time. They have eyebrow ridges using smaller spheres to kind of point out some more, I don't know what you call it, detailing? Skin, bone ridges. Um, that back leg back there doesn't look that good, but I didn't want to change it because I got lazy. I was kind of wrapping up with the map and kind of finishing up. I think I actually completed the map already. Yeah, there's 600 something guests, so I already completed the map. And then, oh yeah, his eyes are actually done by a cube that's normal. Yeah, a normal cube, not 45 degree. And just placing it just just beyond this, this, um, the sphere it kind of gives you that dragon type eye. And then thickening up his neck a little bit to give it a little bit more muscle strength maybe and on to come to the wings <sighs> now wings usually I built them in the past by using walls and borders but since the dragon was in a complete off-grid position the whole dragon had to be built in with shapes and I had to go figure that out and I'm surprised again how I did this and it's, it encourages me to do more creatures in the future for this campaign series. It depends on the theme, depends on what permits me, but I'm more confident now in my monster creating abilities in vanilla that I'm going to continue doing this. I have a Parkadec University in mind now to do this. I just don't know what details you guys want to focus on that I can try maybe explain in detail because it's really hard to describe the thought in my head what I'm visualizing because I visualize a snake with legs and I'm using cylinders as my base of it. I could have used cylinders at a 45 degree to help with that but kind of don't. It, I don't know, it's kind of complicated doing creatures in architect with vanilla with shapes like this is kind of a complicated thing but let me know if you guys want a park university on that i would gladly try to write something up about that and try to explain the thought process behind using shapes like this but this creature took a lot not necessarily a lot out of me but it was a lot of process in general So now I'm finally going to tackle his wings because the wings took a while to figure out. Or I was scared to even touch them because I didn't know if I was going to keep them or not, but a dragon needs wings 
even though some of the pictures I saw for Nidhogs don't have wings, but I'm not that picky about accuracy because, again, dragons are not real. So I have full imagination liberties to do whatever I feel like and figure it out. So there's the wings so far. I was going to try to use roofs, and then I tried to use some cubes, and the cubes kind of looked pixely. It's like, this is not pixel art, so time to change it to something better. And I used the disc pieces, and the disc pieces actually worked out really well. And I was like surprised on the flexibility of that piece. And it uses a lot of pieces, by the way. This this dragon probably cost thousands of dollars in Parkitect standards. It probably cost millions of dollars in our standards. Honestly, this thing's a massive structure. So there's the dragon's wings. I like the second part that connects to his body. Kind of adds some texture to it. I might have, I should have done that with on top of the other pieces of wing, actually. Huh. Too late. Map's done. I'm not going to go back in. When I finish a map, I finish a map. Then it just doesn't. I don't go and do some rehashes or some redevelopment of scenery. And so the last thing was to kind of fix the dragon fire a bit. To kind of fix it and not have three and kind of line it up better. Doing things on a diagonal like that in Word is very hard for those pieces, but I found a way you put a cone. You put two cones actually next to each other and you can kind of thread the needle and do it there. So on to showing the, the tour of the map. I'll see you guys over there. Okay, welcome to Ice Shelf Islands. So we're going to show, I'm going to show you the full park in its glory, and we're going to start off with the main entrance area. So, main entrance area was kind of a difficult thing to start off with, actually, to come to think of it, how long ago it was. I've been working on this park for a good number of hours now. In the video, you won't, you can't tell, but I've been working on this for a good number of days, and I started off with, I think, this area first. I built the restaurant and some buildings to kind of figure out my Viking slash Norse type of architecture. I do really like the statue I made of the uh, strawberries. This is like just, again, I like doing this stuff. It's so It works though because of the textures on the strawberries it makes it look like a beer. So I do like that. Um, I'm always surprising myself with different structures of covering the carousel because it seems to be the, the running trick right now is just always try to find a cover for this. And then yeah, building on this um, tiny like strip of island has been quite difficult and challenging, but it's a um, a good challenge because I like things like that. So we've, as we venture down the park, we go down to the ice caps. This is a frozen piece of lake. So the first thought was like, okay, let's just actually do a fishing village or a fishing tent hut that was set up for the Vikings to kind of just do fishing competitions. Who knows? It was just kind of a way to kind of fill it in and give this area a different look. And to, well, I don't know how to describe it. It just make it look different, but in the same theme. So, I mean, I did it with my Pirate Island for Batavia K. I did it last time. So I just did, thought the same thing would work here and the Norse theme would work as well. So it worked as well. Um, off camera, I, I did add additional ride because I needed the... Uh, guest count to go up and this actually helped out with this ride and I don't mind it here it kind of looks somewhat out of place but it's giving me the money so I need it um, the first roller coaster that I was able to build was the bobsled coaster and this is my gold mountain type of ride I mean this is over the top this would not happen in any real theme park to be honest but here on Astro Inc it will always happen because I love doing rock work, it's my favorite thing to do, and you guys know it, so I do like how it kind of weaves in and out, and then there's gold here out of gumdrops, always a fun piece to use. And then as we venture over here, added some more flat rides, more interest points. Um, I used a lot of flat rides in this map actually, the most I've ever actually used, actually I want to count, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine. I have nine flat rides. Man, that's a lot. And then only two coasters. And as we ventured up over here, if you have, haven't already noticed, the uh, wonderful dragon or Nidhog is a 
Viking dragon are part of myth, like Norse mythology. I haven't really researched much into it, but I felt it was proper to actually make a dragon in vanilla, and I'm quite surprised and happy with the results of this dragon. And on top of this, Mountain of Basalt. Like, this was overly done. I didn't need to do this, but I felt like it needed to happen. And it looks just epic. Just imagine if you're standing right here. Oh, actually, this just reminds me. I should have put down a photo spot just because. Which one? This one. There you go. Photo spot. You take a picture right there. Voila, dragon. And it breathes fire. Has some interaction with the coaster. And then the station is just a simple... Well, I would say simple, but it's a temple. A Norse temple of some sort. Or Viking temple or main house. Kind of matches the rest of the structures around. And then had to do a maintenance shed back here for the hyper... Um, I think this is the first time I built a hyper coaster actually. And so there's more basalt pillars over here to give the coaster some more interaction. We give some more story, and then we go from there. This support. I don't like this support. I thought I got rid of it, and I think I I did, and then the piece disappeared. There we go, that looks way cleaner. There we go. So all in all, this looks uh pretty nice. And this map was challenging, honestly. I I, I was in this Oh wow, you're 16. I've been in this map a long time. So I would say about 16 to 17 hours of work went into this map, especially just alone. These pillars and these shapes took forever. This took maybe a two hour excursion of just placing basalt pillars just to give it that look. It looks snazzy, looks pretty gnarly, but man, that just takes forever. So. Beware if you do that, it, you have to have some courage and some um, will to do this. But it looks good. So let's quickly save and then go over to the main map and see what we're going to get. I think it's just going to be the station, um, not station. I think it's going to be the, um, the cover or the, the entrance cover. Yeah, I was right. So it's just this one. Oh, there's some Z fighting. Ah, not funny. So this places down, up on top, and then do we get... Oh, we do. Look at that. We do. So we get Happy Co Harbor or Biscayne Beach. So I have a decision to make. We can either go with the negative decoration rating thing, or do a old-fashioned Paradise Pier-esque park. I kind of want to do Biscayne Beach next because I really like the idea of doing beachy themed stuff and then making some type of boardwalk. I think that would be nice to do. But all in all, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and for continue to support. Um, if you guys want to watch me on page, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. There'll be a link in the description below. And yeah, we will continue on to the next campaign with Biscayne Beach. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.